back to Watch Advice on YouTube, where the watches are the stars, as always, and there we see where are we at the blue. And with me, sometimes CEOs also appear on your screen. And today, it's Ricardo Guadalupe with me, CEO of Hublot. How are you? Third uh, day of uh, watches, uh, fourth day, sorry, of watches and <laughs> we're losing wonders. time. Yeah, we we're are losing time, you know. Watches all around, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're doing well. A lot of people. Mm. We're, I would say, almost back to normal. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Can you tell me a little bit where is Hublot standing today? Where is your vision for Hublot for the next years? And uh, one, one thing also I wanted to ask you is lots of brands tend to get out of the retail and go into, uh, into their own boutique network. Is this also a strategy you are following? I, I know it from Vienna personally because I live there and I know mm. that you are planning your own boutique now. And so is this really the strategy for the future or what? Yeah, for Hublot, uh, we have the strategy to open uh, a standalone boutiques. We have already a network of 128 mm. standalone boutiques uh, all over the world. But you're having more and more. More and more, but we want to keep the balance between uh, wholesale, so multi-brand retailers and uh, retail standalone boutiques and I must say that half of the boutiques are done with uh, partners. You know, if I look at um, Dubai, if I look at uh, Southeast Asia, it's a franchisee boutique, mm -hmm. it's not our own boutiques. In China, for instance, it's our own boutique. Like you said, in Vienna, we decided to go ourselves with our own boutique. But uh, 50% is owned and 50% is a franchise that are more or less yeah. uh, multi-brand retailers like um, the hourglass in Southeast Asia, for instance. So, so yes, uh, I think it's important for the customer because at the end, what we want to show is, of course, uh, we want to sell a watch, but we want to show the world of Hublot. And as soon as you enter a, a boutique, you have this feeling of entering the world of Hublot. When you are with a multi-brand, it maybe carries 20 brands, 30 brands. It cannot treat us the same way. That's the, uh, the problem. And I think specifically what you are doing, you're always covering niches. You have one niche after the other, but you're doing it very successfully because in your niche you have 100% of, of market. There's no competitor. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this needs more uh, contact or a more uh, close contact to the final customer. And as you said, he needs to jump into yeah. the world. Yes, I and I think that's the customer want today. You know, the evolution of the customer is that he wants to have a really uh, an experience that can be also sometimes uh, when you have a problem, uh, for instance, in after sales service, the fact that he comes to a boutique, we can really treat him uh, in, a, in a better way and give an incredible service. Would you say that approaching Hublot is either you like it or you don't like it? Because it's okay, but it's, uh, that's okay. But that's those okay. who like it, like it 100%, I would say. But is it easier to attract a new customer in your own network, would you say? Uh, to bring a customer to buy a new blow if he's not 100% sure yet? Is it easier with your own stuff than in a, with authorized dealers? Yeah, it probably is. right. Yeah, yeah, you are probably right. And it is. And yeah, Hublot, we try to do watches in a different way than the traditional uh, Swiss watch brands because at the end, if we are not different, why you should buy a Hublot? You know, if we do a similar watch as another brand, it doesn't make sense to buy a Hublot watch. And as you know, we are quite a young brand. Uh, we were founded in 1980, 43 years old, so we don't have this history of hundreds of years being a, an incredible uh, Swiss watch brand with tradition, with history. So we have really to be different. That's why our concept, the art of fusion, is it makes us different. So connecting tradition and innovation. So we must always bring something different, materials, design, and we try as well at, at the movement level. And there's some misinterpretations going on when you do interpretations of watches because you have your style and some then always try to compare them with something else. They think you copied it, but it's still a blow. Okay, if you do a certain shape, it might remember another watch, it can be. Yes. But still, every watch you do is Hublot because Absolutely. you either bring materials, you bring uh, own technology, little details and, and the concept of what is. Yeah. How, how are you now um, looking this this development for the future? Is it more materials? Is it more movements? Is it more design? What are the focuses for the next uh, years, decades, hundreds of years? To go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we work on three pillars. Uh, the materials, of course, is key because we have been the first brand to come with a, a rubber strap. And you know, yeah. talking about people, uh, brands copying the others, we can say that uh, everybody's using a rubber strap today, almost. That's true. 
And uh, well, in the early days, this was quite spectacular, yeah. In 1980, that yeah. was unique and, and revolutionary. They smelled like vanilla. Vanilla, absolutely. Then we brought the ceramic, you have not been the first brand because there are other brands that did ceramic, but we brought the ceramic uh, and the black color in the high-end segment of the watch industry. And we can see that big brands are using ceramic now as well. So we have been followed in this case. And big brands also have black, 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 black watches. Everybody <laughs> has the black. We, in 2006, we came with an all black concept yeah. and we have seen then many brands coming with a black watch and almost yeah. any brand has a black watch today, which is good. It's not, it's not an issue, but it's true that from the design point of view, we always have this inspiration of having the DNA of Fiblo uh, of a portal, you know, the, the inspiration comes from a portal, the screws on the bezel, the, sc the ears and the screws to attach the, the bristle, that's the DNA. Of course, when we do a square watch or a tonal shape watch, there are other tonal shape, other square uh, watches on the market. Of course, there is similarities, but in a watch, you know, we're talking about uh, a 40 millimeter uh, diameter with a 10 millimeter, so it's difficult to express its, itself totally unique, you know. But we try it with the partnership with the artist. So from the design point of view, when we do a Murakami watch, that's unique. Nobody has a Murakami watch. When we do a Saint Bleu tattoo inspired watch with the graphics of a tattoo uh, on the watch, nobody has it. When we do Orlinsky, the, the statue with the sculpture on the facet, nobody has it. So we work on those three pillars and we try to be inspired also not only by our art, the watchmaking art, but also by the art of artists that we fuse into, into a watch and the watch becomes a real piece of art, object of art. In terms of materials, um, I think uh, already you said a new material here when we started our little yes. uh, conversation. It was, it is what? It's a full carbon with texalium. Texalium. <laughs> Another, another thing we have to learn, Texalium. Texalium. So you are still, uh, how can you always find something new? <laughs> so that's why what, we... What, what's, what's the trick behind? Are you, are you having sessions where you, <laughs> I don't know? No, the idea is, yeah, we invest a lot in research and development. <clears throat> and if you come to our factory close to here in Nyon, close to Geneva, uh, we have really a department uh, dedicated to materials, uh, which is quite important with uh, 10 people that are really always researching uh, new colored ceramics. So the red, vivid red, we, c we came three, four years ago. Vivid yellow, we try to have alloys like uh, the magic gold that was ceramic and gold and scratchable. So we, we have many projects going on. And this one was a full carbon, a project that we started uh, three or four years ago. And now we are ready to, uh, to industrialize it and to come uh, with a watch uh, uh, having uh, this material. The material is good because it brings a new technology, but it brings also a new design. When you do a sapphire watch, a crystal clear sapphire watch, it's a new material, but at the same time, it's a new design. So that's uh, the, the, the good part of it. And at the end, uh, we are unique. In this case, uh, there is not really other brands following because it's complicated, because it's a new technology, it's big investments as well to industrialize this kind of materials. And this is really a key element for Iblo always, yeah, to, to come with novelties. That's why we invest, as I said, a lot on research and development. And it's, um, many say, okay, they just copy Richard Mille with that see-through case, but do it. And you are bringing these watches. He was the first to do, okay. He, the Sapphire, <coughs> yes, that's yeah, right. He was the first, but I remember when he presented the watch at SIH, the price was, uh, mm -hmm, I said, oh my goodness, yeah, <laughs> who can afford it? And you bring, let's say, something in your style or in the world of Hublot that also f is so fascinating because it's that completely see-through stuff, but it's compared to a rich meal, affordable. Absolutely. And it's kind of a way of also saying, okay, why having such technology exclusively only for maybe 0.1 decimal percent of the pop, uh, of, of, of potential buyers and there are more out there. Yes. So it's, it's, but you do it. And this yeah. is always, and this is what many people don't understand. They, they complain, Iblu does this and that, but do it and you're doing it. And yes. this is still something I have to raise my head and say, yes. you are innovating, bringing, bringing. 
Yeah, in the case of Sapphire, we have not been the first brand, as you said, to come with a Sapphire watch. But I think we are the first brand to industrialize Sapphire yeah. and to be able to produce not only uh, five pieces or ten pieces, but a few hundred watches yeah, yeah. every year since yeah. now 2016. And then we have also developed color Sapphire mm -hmm. that there we are unique. When we do an orange, when we do a purple, when we do a, a yellow fluorescent uh, Sapphire, there uh, we are unique as well. So... Um Te Texalium? <laughs> is this the only new material or do I have to learn more names this year? <laughs> no, uh, uh, from the material point of view, that's the, the new one. So yeah. if I remember Texalium, I've it's done okay. it. Okay. It's okay. So Texalium is a, is a mix between aluminium yeah. and carbon. <laughs> <laughs> we learn more, we learn more. Hublot um, as a brand, is it um, more men, more women or is it uh, nicely balanced? I would say that women, of course, is uh, an important part of potential consumers uh, for us. And uh, we started from quite a uh, long time ago uh, to have, let's say, 10% uh, of uh, women, 15. And last year, I can give this number, uh, we, we were at 25%. So one quarter of our sales are for women. So it's growing, growing, and we hope that we can do more. So the idea for women is that we don't want to create a, a, a woman design watch. We want to still stick on our big bank to do it smaller, of course. And the idea was to have one click system bracelet, so interchangeable bracelet that is easy to do. You can do it at home. You don't have to go to the to the jeweler. Uh, so, uh, so it becomes an accessory, a luxury accessory for women. And we're seeing a really a great success. Then we have taken also an ambassador, uh, today is Chiara Ferragni, uh, our big influencer in Italy, uh, a lot of uh, influence in the fashion world. And uh, yeah, we are doing well. And the idea, we hope, 30% uh, and growing, growing in the future. This is one of the few uh, numbers he's uh, allowed to give me. <laughs> he's yes. part of a big group and they all have to... Mm, but I, I tried first to, yes. to get some numbers, but um, I could not. <laughs> uh, Ricardo, when you see Hublot for the next years to go, um, what would be your ideal um, vision of Hublot continuing to be Hublot? What, uh, you will probably not, not succeed in the way you think because the world is always a little bit different. Yes, and, but what would be your ideal Hublot for the next five, ten years to come? I would say is really to demonstrate that Hublot is a real manufacturer that we are really verticalized, we are integrated. That's why we have a project uh, of building a third uh, manufacturer now. It's going to be even a big manufacturer in which we will put the, the assembling of all our movement and watches that will start this year, uh, meaning that we really want to be part of the top brands of this industry. And to be part of the top brands, you must be verticalized from the movement point of view and from the, for us, from the material, high technological material, so being able to produce uh, cases and bracelets as well. So really demonstrate to the consumer that, yeah, Hublot uh, is part of those brands. You know, that's, that's my ideal. So young, but yeah, fully, always different, fully integrated. But fully integrated with uh, a lot of know-how in technology, as I said, in uh, producing sapphire, producing ceramic, producing texalium, and from the movement uh, perspective, increasing the part of our own manufacturing movement, like the chronograph Unico that we see here, like the complications, like new calibers uh, that, uh, that will co come out. The fabric will be around Neon, where... Where we are, we, have, we are lucky there is a place uh, that we can build just uh, on the side. Good things to come. Yes. Looks like. And um, I, I, I have now the pleasure, and this is, I, I kept this as, mm. as the last thing. Uh, Ricardo is going to present us one of the highlights of, uh, of Hublot, personally. Yes. And I insisted he's going to do it. <laughs> it was <laughs> quite a spectacular watch. There is a cage turning around, and it's a very three dimensional thing you're doing. Maybe you uh, take. Uh, over now and yes. do my job and present what I <laughs> normally do and show the watch. <laughs> okay, so this is what we call a masterpiece. So this is the, the haute couture uh, of uh, Hublot because it's really super complicated watch with a biaxial tourbillon at six o'clock. And another complication, which is uh, displaying the time through two hands that are retrograde. So for the hour and for the minutes, 
It's a two B retrograde uh, ends, and it's quite difficult to realize from the mechanical point of view. And we say masterpiece because it's not really, it's a big bang inspired, but as you can see, the glass goes at six o'clock and you have like a, an amphitheater showing really the spectacle of what is the, the tourbillon B axis. And this is really showing our know-how not to do just a classic tourbillon, but to try to reinvent a little bit uh, the complications of our industry. And I think this kind of product uh, is very unique and you can only find it at Hublot. Of course, as you said, you like it or you don't like it. But yeah. when you like it, it's, a, it's really a great piece. And it's, uh, I have to say, well, the, the fact that uh, they have been opening it, as you say, yeah. like an amphi, it's true. Uh, you really get something to see, and I think uh, this could be a watch uh, that someone maybe uh, on a daily basis uh, just looks uh, yeah. on his watch and just enjoys what's happening. Absolutely. It's, it's not only telling time, but also showcasing art, Absolutely. showcasing watchmaking. Absolutely. And, and yeah, well, our idea is that the movement today is part of, of the design of the watch as well. And the movement is the most important, it's the soul. Of a, of a mechanical watch, and we don't want to 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 hide it, you know, with a dial. Uh, that's our philosophy. We will show it anyway yeah. in all details, and even from the backside. If you look yeah. at it, there is a kind, a kind of, of a small bubble, am yeah. bubble amplifying yeah. the. Oh, perfect, nicely done, Ricardo. Then uh, many good years to come with you. I uh, hope so. You're still young. <laughs> you you will be there, and yes. uh, let's see. And yeah. Maybe some of you understand the blow a little bit better. It's uh, you can criticize the brand doing this and that, but at the end of the day, they have been pioneers in lots of things. And you have been mentioning that one-click system. Yeah. And if I'm not m completely wrong, you were one of the first ones to offer this system of interchangeable bracelets Absolutely. and straps. And, and you see that many brands are oh. offering this system now. And they're struggling uh, with, with technologies yeah, how to yeah, realize because it. Because it's patented, our system, so they have to, to find another way to do this system than ours. Yeah, and there are lots of these systems that are not as good as yeah. yours, because yours is really, let's say, kiss, keep it simple yeah. and stupid. Not It's not bad, because you just press and then you unclick yeah. it. Sometimes you have to turn around, you have to find... You, yeah. and, uh, and for a woman in particular, it's quite complicated, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hublot being creative, <laughs> successful. <Always>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, okay, Ricardo. Okay, thank you, Alexander. Uh, we will have a look at your products now. Um, to you, all the best. And yeah, let's meet again next year. Okay. Watches and Wonders 2024. If Absolutely. there is still one or not a pandemic, no, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> we hope not. <laughs> oh, we don't. Know. <laughs> Thanks for watching. The watches are the stars. Sometimes the CEOs appear on your screen, but I think it's good to have them. Thank you very much for taking time to be Thank with us you. and bye-bye from Watches and Wonders 2020. Bye-bye.